Welcome back. If you guys wonder why there's always a little bit of a pause between the speakers, it's because we are uh, live streaming and we're welcoming our live audience that are tuning in online. So if you're beaming in from the interwebs, hello and welcome. Uh, we're now entering our flash talks. This is going to be fun. And so our first flash talker we have is Viola Kruna. Uh, she's the head of marketing at Ipside. Is that right? Ipside. Oh, boy. Uh, she has a passion for marketing, and her flash talk uh, is going to show us a little bit about her tried and true method, um, a workflow for testing and measuring marketing strategy success. Please welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is the clicker. Thank you very much for coming. Great to see you here. I'm very happy about it. It's my first talk at a WordCamp, so I'm a little bit nervous, <laughs> but yes. And yeah, I would love to talk to you about um, testing instead of guessing. I'm Viola, I'm from Insight, a WordPress agency, and the topic today I brought to you is the contact form. So I had a conversation to our sales team. They wanted to structure the leads better, and they told me, okay, we want to add one more form field. And it should come the monthly volume. And you can think adding a new form field to a contact form was for the marketing a big no, oh my god, because the conversion rate can go down. There are, one second, there are some proofs um, about this. So for example, nail petal, they could just increase the conversion rate by, the, um, by removing one form field. And yeah, it was a high number, and you see, so it's known um, also when I studied marketing, everyone said, okay, not putting more form fields, and yeah, it was for the marketing a little bit, team a little bit bad. But my belly feeling said no, but it, instead of saying to the sales team, no, we are not going to do this, I told them, okay, we are going to test this. And now the question is, but how? And I created um, a workflow, therefore, and every one of you can download this workflow afterwards. I also have the presentation inside of it, the descriptions, how to use it. So every one of you can use this workflow for yourself. And I'm going to explain you a little bit about this. These are the different steps um, who are important, therefore, for the different workflows. And I would like to start with the first one, share and pitch the idea. So I'm going to come always back to our example with the contact form and our conversion rate. You can see it's a simple Excel um, sheet. It looks a little bit overwhelming on the first look, but we were all summarizing all our ideas here, the whole marketing team. So, you know, we had different ideas, and instead of like just telling them, we were writing them down in a structured way, as you can see. So if I have now this idea with putting one more form field into our contact form, I would also put it here into the backlog of the document and put the form field inside of it. Also with a short um, item name and with a description for it. And here you can see it's linked and it's a pitch card. I know it sounds more fancy than it is. It's also a simple um, Google Docs, but it's also a stru structured way. So all the ideas you can see they are always having the same structure, so we're having it more structured and clean and simple. So it's just a one-pager, and I was putting out some information of this because it's a lightning talk, so I cannot talk about everything. But yeah, the main important things are these topics. So you can see um, this contact form is divided in two parts, before testing and after testing. And so, I will start with the hypothesis. For this hypothesis, it is about the contact form. We were expecting that the conversion rate will decrease 12%, so from 7 to 6.1%. And yeah, because we uh, researched this. So your hypothesis should not just be, oh, I think so, no, no, no. You need to have really numbers and to write this down and to write your hypothesis in a clear, structured, numbered way. The next is the objective. So why should we do this? Yeah, the sales team needed it for structuring the leads better, though, so that was the objective here. And in the next 
step is the design. And therefore, you can just take easy uh, screenshot. For example, if you see somewhere a cool thing, um, you just take a screenshot of it, put it as the design, and then you have your design. It's, we shouldn't make it too complicated here. And the last thing is the duration. So many people ask me, oh, how long should we drive the test? So it depends. Uh, there is no clear number, but there's a cool tool. It's the AB testing guide. I also linked this to, for you so you can use it. So there, for example, you put in the unique visitors and other metrics, and then it says how long the test should run. So our test needs to run 12 weeks to have a significant proof what's the right thing to do. So then the next step is to rate the idea. And therefore, we are going into the rater. And you can see impact, confidence, ease, and priority. So it's important to rate the ideas not just by belly feeling, also by this other metrics. So impact means how high is the impact. So if the conversion rate is to change, yeah, it's an impact. So every one of the team is allowed to vote for it. Not the head of marketing is going to make the decision. No, the team together. And that was also a very powerful um, tool for the team because they love to use it because they knew, hey, my um, opinion votes as well. So you see, we, we gave different um, numbers from 0 to 10. 0 means it's not having an impact. 10 means it's having a high impact. So the next is confidence. So also the belly feeling should be um, involved. So there we said also, again, I think it's, I'm very confident that the conversion uh, rate will drop. And others said, OK, no. And then we have also the ease. So how easy is it? to do it, it's very easy to implement this test into, your, um, into the contact form, so we gave a high number. So out comes 9.0, that was the highest mm, number I ever had during my testing experience. And we started with this test, so after, because you see here it's now 9 and it's the highest, so we put it at this into life, and we started the experiment. We waited um, the time, and after this, during the time, we made the A-B testing. So there are different tools like Google Optimize and um, HubSpot. I used them. And they were very good where we A-B tested these two different options. And here we had, again, 7% the conversion rate. And for the other, we expect that it's going 6.1 around. And against our expect expectations, we had 7.1%. So the other option with the one more form field was even a little bit better. And so the option B was for us the winner. So at the end, you're drawing the conclusion. So you have all your finished um, tests in your closet. So you can find them also in a year again in the same structured way. And yeah, so you write down the outcome. So what does it mean? So we can implement this now. And in the next step, the learning. So it's very good if you have different markets to test it first at one market and then at the other market, because also the markets are different here. So the learnings for you um, is, yeah, testing instead of guessing. And um, also this example showed me and my team, OK, expecting all our expectations against all our expectations. We, the test run very good. Um, then every target group is different. That means also if you have, if you are going to do this test, your conversion rate, of course, can decrease. It depends always on the target group. And know your numbers. Yeah, that's very important that you know your numbers for knowing if you're measuring right and so on. And <laughs> yeah, don't be afraid of failing tests because there is no failing in tests. There is just a learning. So if a test wasn't working well, we were still celebrating it because every test you finish brings you a little bit, gives you more knowledge, um, and yeah, every test is a success. And also the team was very motivated about it because everyone was involved in it. And here you can download the tool, like I promised to some of you as a little teaser. And there is yeah my name, so you can contact me if you have questions, reach out to me. And my next talk is going to be in WordCamp Europe. So I will talk there even a little bit more and even how we improved our conversion rate 18%. So yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>